It's midnight, and March 7th, 2024 has come to an end. It wasn't a special day for most, but the best Mario Maker players in the world are celebrating a huge milestone they've been working towards for years. They've been trying to clear every single level created in Mario Maker. There were over 10 million levels created in the game, and the amount of uncleared levels left has just reached only 100. They've already cleared some of the hardest levels in the game and put in a ton of work, but this was going to be the final frontier. This is the story of Mario Maker's last 100 levels and the players who put in the final push to try to beat them. Super Mario Maker came out in September 2015. Both casual and expert players rushed to create all the Mario levels they've always wanted to see. Most of them were terrible. When Mario Maker 2 released in June 2019, Maker 1 started to fall into obscurity. Maker 2 has a lot more creation options and is on a much more popular console. The game eclipsed Maker 1 in popularity. The only ones who kept playing Maker 1 were people who had nostalgia for it or who didn't own a Switch. Nintendo encouraged this transition and decided to disable uploads from Maker 1 in March 2021. Around this time, a community formed named Team 0%. Their goal was to have every single level get at least one clear, bringing the clear rate above 0%. There were roughly 48,000 uncleared levels, a daunting task to say the least. But over the rest of 2021, all of 2022, and almost all of 2023, the amount of levels plummeted to about 25,000. This is when they learned that the Wii U's online servers would get shut down in early April 2024. They now had six months to clear the remaining 25,000 levels. The community grew and put in a huge amount of work to keep clearing these levels. And on March 7th, this clear marked the 100 levels left milestone. Let's take a look at the levels still remaining. 95 of them are built in the new Super Mario Bros. U theme with very similar building styles. It became very popular to build speedrun levels in this theme with really hard techniques called Kaizo Tricks. Of these 95, there were three that were on another level of difficulty. And these other five were also insane. Let's take a look at Wasted Summer. This level is called Wasted Summer because the creator, Zun, wasted an entire summer trying to upload it. This precision level requires really tight movement and has four really difficult sections. First, there's this tight swim between a saw blade and spikes. Mario's head is really sensitive when underwater, so it's incredibly difficult to stay at just the right height to get through this gap. That's why this next section, with the same vertical gap but starting with no speed, was even more difficult. Then, there was this boo ring right before the end, where you have to swim really close between these two boos. And finally, the ending. The creator of the level just tried swimming straight at the flagpole between this one block gap. But this wasn't like the other one block gaps. The spike hitboxes are much meaner than the saw blade hitboxes. The creator of the level failed roughly 30 times on this ending. However, some bro was able to come up with a setup that's still hard, but may be easier than one in 30. The idea is to swim off the ground, swim one more time, and hold right. It was pixel perfect, but thankfully you could take your time to line it up. Unfortunately, there was no setup for the frame perfect swim input and the frame perfect right press. Still, this finding of a setup inspired the player Megan Narwhal to give it a chance. She was good at these types of levels in Maker 2, so it wouldn't take long for her to start getting some runs going. Megan's first attempt at the ending wasn't successful, but she didn't let it get to her. In fact, she expected this to happen about 25 times. But after 10 attempts at the ending, 
she was able to do this. Oh, cool. I did it. Thanks for the GGs. When Megan cleared Wasted Summer, there were 54 levels left. This next level was much more competitive, and it's called The Hardest Muncher Stairs. This level was much simpler to understand than the last one. This was also an underwater level. In fact, it was the last one left in the game. All you have to do is swim between these munchers in a stair-like pattern. There are 90 stairs, split into four sets of staircases. And after you finish all 90, you get one red coin. To finish the level, you need to do four laps, meaning you have to climb 360 stairs. Unlike the last level, this one had multiple players vying to be the one to clear it. The main contenders were Noble D4, Kill a Dragon, and Cap. Noble D4 was the first to start playing the level around February 18th. He cleared almost two of the 16 staircases. Kill a Dragon started playing the next day and was able to climb about half a staircase. A couple days later, Noble struck back, clearing four and a half of them and being the first person to collect one of the red coins. A few more days later, and Kill a Dragon started to catch up, reaching three and a half stairs. On March 9th, they both reached a new personal best. Noble reached six and a half staircases, and Kill a Dragon, seven. Cap also started playing on March 9th, finishing one staircase, but decided to clear a different level instead. The next day, Cap improved to three staircases, then five. Noble improved to eight, collecting a second red coin for the first time. But Kill a Dragon completed ten full sets of staircases. Kill a Dragon seemed to be the most consistent, but on the 11th, Cap gave him a run for his money. He climbed eight staircases as well, becoming the third person to complete two full laps. And then two hours later, he would do it again. His consistency was clearly building, and he would prove it. On the very next run, Cap passed his PB, collected a third red coin, finishing three full laps, and then did this. Hope I burst y'all eardrums. Shout out to Noble D4 and Krilla Dragon. This would not have happened without them. Well, it would have. I wouldn't have done it. When Cap cleared the hardest muncher stairs, there were 17 levels to go. Over the next day, 11 levels were cleared, but these six proved that they were the hardest levels left in the game. Let's take a look at I can't stop being myself. Similar to the last level, there isn't much here to look at. The level takes 20 seconds at maximum, and you just have to do the same trick over and over again with one slight variation. The trouble is, this jump is really hard. There are three difficult aspects. First, you need to time your jump just before you hit the spring to not hit the spikes next to you, but that's the easy part. Second, you have to have the perfect jump height. Not too high or you hit the spikes, and not too low or you don't have the distance to make it to the other side. Last, you need to get the perfect float jump. You see, Mario floats in the air slightly longer when you're holding jump. Therefore, ideally, after you let go of jump to get the right height, you want to hold jump again as soon as possible. This awkward timing of a precise release and then press back to back was extremely difficult, and you need to pull this off back and forth eight times. If you succeed in that, you get one attempt at the hard part, this even longer version of the jump. Finally, if you complete that, you get to do it all again, one more time. Since this was the same jump over and over, you could definitely improve over time, and people did. First was Starlight Gino. 
Gino started playing on February 27th and slowly kept improving. After one day, he made it through the pipe for the first time. A couple days later, he successfully completed 17 jumps, but died on the very last one. Over the next three days, Gino would have five more attempts go to the last jump, but all five of them would fail, with the fifth being one pixel away. Gino had to take a break, so he stepped away from the level. On February 27th, when he started, there were over 500 levels left, but as time passed and there were less and less options, more players were bound to give it them all, and two of them did, Dr. Cliché and Yataku, or good luck in English. On a late night on March 11th, Dr. Cliché played for about four hours. He got pretty consistent at the back and forth jumps, and he could make it to the pipe jump often enough, but every time he got there, he couldn't do it. This pipe jump is a ridiculous filter. Every single run that would get to this jump would die. Not a single run could make it to the pipe. Even with significant practice on just this jump, Cliché was struggling a ton. It was especially daunting since he knew a successful run would have to hit this twice. Finally, after two hours, something in his brain unlocked, and Cliché hit the pipe jump for the first time. And over the next 10 minutes, Cliché hit it a couple more times with about 10% consistency. It wasn't great, but it was definitely better than nothing. So he went back to attempts. About a half an hour later, he had his first run that made the pipe jump. He was able to do two more jumps after that, but that was where the day would have to end so he could get some sleep. Meanwhile, in Japan, GL was similarly struggling. It also took him two hours to make his first pipe jump in a run, and two hours after that, he hit 15 of the 18 jumps. Super impressive. He was one back and forth and one pipe jump away from victory. He also stopped for the night. The next day, Cliché would start his session first, around 8 p.m. Four hours later, and Cliché had his first attempt at the final jump of the level, but he didn't quite make it. He knew his pipe jump consistency was about 10%, and with the nerves, probably even lower. He just needed to get more attempts to the end. After streaming for four more hours, a grueling eight-hour stream, he would have five more attempts. But sadly, none of them would come to fruition. Cliché needed sleep, and the next day, he would wake up to this. Sadly, GL wasn't recording his attempts, but he said after 14 hours, he got his first attempt at the last jump, and half an hour later, he did it. When good luck cleared this level, five levels remained. The next one to look at is The Last Hope. The Last Hope is a 50 second speedrun level with a tight timer and a bunch of crazy sections. In particular, these two tricks were really difficult to conquer. First is timing this shell drop, so it ends up exactly in this hole. It goes down and collects a red coin, which you need to finish the level, and it's a serious run killer. The other hardest part is this tight jump off this conveyor. You have to be at just the right height and do a mid-air twirl at just the right time. The creator of the level completed this section by chaining to a claw grip, that is, having one finger on the run button and one finger on the jump button and suggested our players pause to do the same. This made the jump much more doable, but still really difficult. The two players poised to beat this level each had a reputation. First is Lil Curbs. He's a great Mario player, but also an incredible content creator with a large following and great videos. They're hilarious and feature his genuinely very impressive Mario gameplay. Second is Fritzef. Fritz has been a dedicated member of Team 0% from the beginning, when there were only five people. He has been committed to this goal for half a decade, and notably is in the top 10 for most clears by a single person, and he's already cleared 9 other levels in the last 100, more than every other player. Lil Curb started his grind first on a very special day, Mario Day. Over the course of two days, he streamed for almost 10 hours. About half of that was spent practicing the different sections of the level, especially the shell drop and claw grip sections, so that he could build consistency. He had gotten to the point where he could clear the level in four segments individually, but with relatively low consistency at each. Now he just needed to string it all together. In his attempts, he did this. But any other zero percenters in here right now, 
lead the level for me, all right? It's a pain to learn this. So trust me when I say you don't want to play this. I'm going to go to bed because this is starting to get late. Fritz F. solidified this unreachable legacy, the person to clear 10% of the last 100 levels. Four remain. It's time for Phantom Oddworld. Phantom Oddworld is a 60 second speedrun level based all around POW blocks. If you logged into Twitch or YouTube on March 12th or 13th to watch attempts, there was one player who was way ahead of the pack, Applesauce Fiona. Fiona's been playing hard Mario levels for eight years. And she's great at levels like this with fast inputs, but usually in the Mario World style. Fiona spent two days grinding this level for a total of 13 hours. The first 11 and a half were entirely practice. Fiona wanted to make sure she could clear each section of the level before she tried to put it all together. And there was one section that was brutally difficult. This triple ground pound stall section. You needed to ground pound at this exact spot to let the sideways spring hit you, then instantly twirl, then throw the pow, and then ground pound in this exact location to do it again. And you need to string together three of these without losing too much height. It took Fiona three hours to do this for the first time. Finally, after all that practice, Fiona knew she could do it, and it just took a grind. There was one problem though. Rumors started circulating that a Japanese player was attempting to level two, Yamada. Yamada is an incredible Mario Maker player, one of the best in the world, and this type of level was exactly his forte. Still, Fiona could get her attempts in before she would go to bed, and Yamada wouldn't start playing until the night, and maybe the rumors were fake. Over the next hour and a half, unfortunately, she didn't make too much progress. Being able to stitch together every trick perfectly was too much, and she had to go to bed. When she woke up, He's one of the best in the world for a reason. Yamada is just a machine when it comes to this style of level. It's ridiculous. Three remain. Now it's time for my favorite one, Welcome Extreme. This level has one aspect that makes it extremely challenging, which is the timer. It makes every section of the level harder. This first jump could be handled with this alternate route, but you don't have time to take it. Instead, you need to control your speed perfectly off screen. Every single run, it felt like you needed to reset immediately, which is really demanding to handle mentally. Finally, when you hit this first jump, you need to deal with another really hard part, this fall. Again, falling on this block would be easy, but the timer is too tight. Finally, at the end, a speedrunner's worst nightmare, RNG. These piranha plants spit fire at random times, and you don't have time to wait to go across safely. You just have to gun it and pray. 65% of all runs that got to this point would die to no fault of the player. Then, as a reward for completing it, you get a red coin. Two more laps to go. That means you had to nail this jump again, which was already ruining about 90% of all your runs. Then hit the fall again and the RNG again. To be able to pass the plants twice was about 12%. Can you imagine hitting 12% odds? crushing these two tricks three times in a row, and then dying to these plants on lap three? There is nothing left after these plants. You are guaranteed to win as long as you're on good pace. But instead, due to a one in three, you just had to try it all over again. It was brutal. There were a ton of great players getting attempts deep into the level, but Haribo39 was the first to get to the lap three RNG section. An hour later, Haribo would also be the second person to attempt it. And another hour later, Haribo would have the third chance at it. Statistics say that after three runs to this section, you're likely to have one succeed. But it was still the same 35% as always. Finally, Haribo cleared Welcome Extreme. Two levels to go. It's time for the level called The Last Dance. Like Last Hope in Phantom Oddworld, The Last Dance was a crazy looking speedrun with Kaizo tricks. On the American side of things, the player grinding the level was the beast. He's one of the best American players to touch the game, and he was also willing to put in the work to make it happen. On the Japanese side, 
Yamada was back and wanted another clear in the final four. They were off to the races. Yamada kept playing off stream and beat the last dance. He's unstoppable at these kinds of levels. It's honestly mind blowing. The beast would beat it the next day as well. Finally, let's talk about trimming the herbs. These past seven levels have been hard, but they were never gonna stop Team 0% from clearing every level. At this point, it's March 15th and trimming the herbs is so hard, there are still players who doubt we can make it. What does the level look like, and what makes it so hard? Well, thankfully, the creator uploaded a video of them clearing it that we can analyze. It's only 12 seconds, but it is a gauntlet. It starts with this frame-perfect bomb drop where Mario can re-catch the bomb afterwards. One frame too early, and Mario will bounce on the bomb instead of catching it. One frame too late, and Mario will bounce on the plant, wasting too much time, since this bomb's fuse is a tight timer that will come into play later. Then you need to control your momentum in a really specific way to get past these saws. It needs to be a frame-perfect float jump with precise left and right inputs. Then you need to hit another frame-perfect drop again while setting up for the same really hard jump again, except this time there's more saw blades and you're still trying to recover from the last jump. This second jump is probably the hardest part of the entire level. Now you have to do the frame drop one more time, but this time bonk the bomb instead of catching it, and then you can bounce on it to start the climb section. Here we bounce on a bunch of bombs in a specific way to collect red coins and hope we were fast enough in the first section. After climbing all the way up, we do the frame perfect drop one more time to get in the door. Who were the contenders for this last level? Well, there were a bunch. All of the top players gave it at least a shot, but they were all struggling significantly. Days passed, and progress was made, but people were extremely doubtful of our chances. In fact, it seemed like as more days went by, some people became less confident. Even for the best players, it is not obvious to figure out how hard a level is when watching it, and as they tried it, they realized this level was much more difficult than expected. In fact, it was so hard, suspicion started murmuring around the community. Was it possible the creator uploaded it using TAS? This became the only topic of conversation in the community for a full week, and after rehashing the same arguments over and over, people became heated. Some players felt extremely strongly that Ahoyo uploaded the level illegitimately, and others felt extremely strongly that it was legitimate. Those who thought a task was used had a couple points, but their main one was this. The level's creator Ahoyo uploaded this in 2017, and he'd said it took him about a month to clear. It's seven years later now, and players are much, much better, but lots of the top players don't believe they are capable of beating it within a month. Those who thought the level was legitimate believe that the creator must have just been that good in 2017. The main point on their side was that the tassing tools didn't exist in 2017. This divide in the community was tough. Harsh words were exchanged, and there seemed to be no end, since the creator would never confirm that he used TAS. Ahoyo had been an inactive in the community for years now, and was not interested in re-engaging in this old passion of his. He he'd moved on. At least, that's what we all thought. Until March 22nd, 2024, Ahoyo messaged in the Team 0% Discord for the first time in six years, answering all of these questions. Ahoyo did use a TAS to upload trimming the herbs. How did he get his TAS? Well, he was a streamer, and one of his viewers told him that they got it working, but wanted to abandon the project. They sent him the information, and his friend used that information to create a TAS in two days that could be used in Mario Maker. The creator decided to use the TAS to clear one of his other levels, 
And then he thought of a funny prank. What if he uploaded a level that would be way too hard, and after everyone lost their minds, he would reveal that task tools now exist in Mario Maker? He did just that and uploaded Trimming the Herbs. Unfortunately, after everyone watched the video, no one really thought it was that crazy, and everyone moved on. Ahoyo didn't think it was as funny of a prank anymore, and he moved on with his life too. Finally, after hearing Trimming the Herbs was the last level left, he realized it was unfair for this to stop Team 0%, so he revealed everything. This reveal had some strange consequences. The emotions in the community were all over the place. Some felt betrayed by a friend, some felt validated in their opinions, and others were excited. Why were they excited? Well, because Team 0% had now officially beaten their goal, that being clear every level that was uploaded legitimately. Since this level was uploaded using a task, it was now considered not part of the 0% challenge, so every valid level had been beaten. There were other illegitimate levels uploaded to the servers, even impossible ones, and Team 0% decided a long time ago that it'd be lame to lose the challenge to genuinely impossible levels. Achieving this seven-year goal was suddenly real, but it was also very anticlimactic. Everyone was hoping that someone would clear the last level, whatever that level might have been, and we would all celebrate. Unfortunately, we didn't get this exciting ending with one big finale. We got a level taken off the list by default. These are the consequences of cheating a level. The community had no final, exciting, happy ending. Also, around 10 to 15 top players had now wasted 50 to 100 hours on a level that no longer mattered for the challenge. In addition, there was a monetary issue. People put up prizes for some of the last clears in the game, and in total, the bounties for trimming the herbs were worth over $3,000. The second to last level, or now technically the last level, had bounties of around $100 when it was cleared. It's very likely Yamada would have received more if it was known to be the last level. So where does that leave us? This information came out on March 22nd. Therefore, we actually beat the challenge a week ago when the last dance was cleared, but we're only finding out now. People who put up prize money could now take it back if they want to. Trimming the herbs has no legitimate clears, including the upload check. Some people are celebrating an incredible accomplishment, but more people are disappointed by this ending. In fact, lots of people are talking about how they wish they could see one thing. They want to see someone beat Trimming the Herbs for real. Now this doesn't totally align with Team 0%'s goals. Illegitimately uploaded levels shouldn't matter because the impossible levels can never be cleared. But can you imagine if the story didn't end with the level being removed, but instead we beat a level that was truly meant to be TAS only? There were only four or so players who kept grinding trimming the herbs after the TAS announcement, and they only had about two weeks left until shutdown. Would anyone be able to beat it? Well, the player who had the best chance was Sanix. He's an incredible Mario Maker 2 player and had been making the most progress. With 14 days left, he bonked the bomb for the first time. And over the next few days, he got more and more bonks. With 11 days left, Sanix bounced off the bomb for the first time, starting the climb. He kept grinding. In the same day, he bounced off the bomb again and again and again. With 10 days left, he hit a huge PB where he not only bounced off the bomb, but kept climbing, collecting three out of the five red coins. On April 1st, with eight days left, he had an extremely promising run, collecting all five coins, but dying in the last possible section. This is the closest you can be to achieving the level without a success. Over the next few days, he'd keep improving his consistency, getting to the climb section more and more. With three days to go, Sanex booted up his stream, and the community watched anxiously, knowing it was now or never. For this whole video, we've been talking about these players competing to see who can get the first clear on these levels. However, Team 0% wasn't a place for individuals to try to steal first clears out from under people or to hunt for prize money. It was a team. A team seeking one goal, together. Clear every level. 
This clear wasn't an accomplishment for one incredible player. It was an accomplishment for all of us. Everyone who got one first clear and everyone who got a thousand. This was a culmination of seven years of work by thousands of amazing players. This was one of the greatest achievements in gaming history. And that's why, for this entire community, this was Cloud9.